What's up guys? Back in December of last year, I posted a picture of this on Google Plus and I wrote, one man's trash is another man's treasure. I was actually referring to the GoPro stand that's right behind me and I asked you guys what I should do with it. Now some of you said I should throw it back in the trash and some of you actually had some really good ideas. Some of you suggested that I make a stand-up game machine with old MAME ROMs. Some of you said I should do a standing workstation and a lot of you had some other really great ideas that I just sort of decided to combine everything together and create a media hub slash gaming machine. So I wanted to give you guys an update of what I've done so far. So without further ado, let's get started. Now before I begin, I'm gonna give you just a little quick tour of the stand. There's nothing spectacular, but I'll show you what I'm working with. So at the very top, you have the place where you mount your monitor. And I know I wanted to go with a 24 inch because anything bigger would just look awkward. So I decided to go with the Dell P2415Q. It's actually right now under $500 and it's a 4K monitor. So I thought that was a pretty good deal considering that that exact same monitor probably a year ago with the exact same specs would probably run in anywhere between two and three grand. So the fact that I'm going 4K makes sure that I'm future proofing this thing that I'm building. The next thing I got was this RKM V5, which is actually an updated version of the Android on a Stick MK808B I did a review of two years ago. And it actually supports 4K playback, which is very important because I'm using a 4K monitor. Now the specs on this guy are actually pretty good. It's running Android 4.4.2. It's got two gigs of RAM with 16 gigs onboard memory, but it also has room for expandable storage, which I'll show you guys in a second. On the side here, there's an OTG USB port. Next to that, we have the micro SD card slot, which is good for up to 32 gigs max. And on the back, there's an ethernet connector in case you wanna wire it directly for faster speeds. And then next to that, we have a, another USB host, so you can connect an external drive, mouse, or keyboard. And then below that, there's the power DC input. And right over here, in between the heatsink fans, there's a reset or recovery button. Now because it has a lot of different features and functionality, it's actually a pretty big in size. As a matter of fact, when you compare it next to the Fire TV or even the Google Chromecast, you can see the size difference. And I'll throw in my old Android MK808B just for comparison. So after I got all those two parts, I wanted to make sure and install them. And first things first, I had to install the monitor. So I started unboxing the monitor, I was really excited. I grabbed the mounting plate from the GoPro stand and then this happened. I realized that the mount on the GoPro is actually not a vase mount, so it wasn't going to work. So I was actually very disappointed about that, so I need to get an adapter so that I can fit the vase mount on the monitor so it could fit perfectly fine on the GoPro stand. So that's actually the reason why you don't see the monitor back there is because I'm still waiting for that adapter plate. But I wanted to move forward with the project and decided since I have an L-shaped desk, I'm not currently using one part of the desk so I just put the monitor there, I installed the V5 and then this happened. It stuck out like a sore thumb. And all I can think was, but you know what, I decided to move forward anyway and then I remembered that it came with a HDMI extender. So I was actually excited about that and it ended up working out just fine. With the extender, I was actually able to hide everything, especially because this Dell monitor has this nice little cover plate underneath it. So I was able to tuck everything in, snap it back into place and we were good to go. So I plugged the mouse and I turned the power on and it surprisingly booted up really quickly and was greeted to a very familiar user interface. It reminded me a lot of Windows 8 and the live tiles. So after everything booted and I poked around a little bit, I went into the settings to adjust the screen. It was a little bit off, so I made some adjustments there. And I also went to the display settings to make sure that I was in the right resolution, which was 3840 by 2160. Now after I fixed everything or made sure that all the settings were correct, I decided to poke around and play with the browser. Now surprisingly, using the default browser, everything was very smooth. I was actually impressed at how smooth it was. I decided to also try it with Google Chrome, so I downloaded Google Chrome. Everything looked really good. I like how everything upscaled properly. 
I almost felt like I was using a desktop computer and not really a mobile operating system. So that was kind of nice to see that. And just for fun, I decided to download Google Launcher just to see how it is, just because I like Google Launcher on my phone. And no, that kind of went out the door really quick and decided to go back to the default launcher, which I was very happy with. So a couple things I decided to do was run a couple of benchmarks and play a few games. I noticed that games played actually very fine. I didn't have too much trouble with them. There were a couple of games that I felt that had a couple of frame rate drops, but nothing too drastic. It could also be that it's upscaling really high to a 4K resolution or UHD. So that could be one of the reasons. Although some games or some benchmarks, I know that they were being ran at 1080p and they were just kind of being upscaled. So for what it's worth, it didn't really benchmark really well. It actually did okay, I guess. But Otherwise, in terms of performance, I wasn't really upset about it. It did what it wanted it to do and I was perfectly happy with that. So a couple things I want to do with this is, of course, install Tasker, do some home automation stuff with it, and overall in general, just have a nice fun game station slash hub where people could come over and use it. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with the overall cabinet itself. I do plan on putting some wireless chargers right where the LED lights kind of shine where if people want to charge their phone, they can go in there and don't even have to ask me. They know where everything's at. So anyhow, guys, this is sort of like a part one of what I'm doing so far. I want to hear back from you guys. Let me know uh, or give me some ideas of what I should do. Should I just scrap the whole project or should I, you know, end up going with a different route? Let me know what your thoughts are. I'd like to hear from you and what you think. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed this fun little quick video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. I really appreciate when you guys do that. And of course, when you reshare it, it makes things freaking awesome because I know you guys like the video. Until next time, adios.